Welcome back to Functional Analysis. And as always, many, many thanks to all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. We've reached part 25 and today we will talk about the Hahn-Banach theorem. There are different versions of the theorem, but the most important one is the one that holds for normed spaces. Now please recall, if we have a normed space x, we can consider all the continuous linear functionals which we denoted by x prime. The famous Hahn-Banach theorem now tells us that this x prime is in some sense large. In fact, this implies that we can use x prime to analyze the original space x. Now the theorem is easy to remember. We just look at a subspace u in x and at a continuous linear functional only defined on u. In other words, this u prime is an element in the dual space of the normed space u. With these assumptions, the Hahn-Banach theorem tells us that there is an extension of this functional to the whole space x. Let's call this element lowercase x prime and it is defined on the whole space x and also mapped to the real or complex numbers. So this is just an element in our capital x prime. Now we get two properties out and the first one is that x prime is an extension of u prime. This means that they are the same when we only put in members from u. Of course, this is what we mean by an extension, but we also don't change the operator norm of u prime. So the norm of x prime in the dual space of x is the same as the norm of u prime in the dual space of u. There we have it, this version of Hahn-Banach, often called the extension version, just tells us that we always find an extension with the same norm. So you see, the theorem is easy to remember and that's what you really should do. Okay, now I want to show you how this nice theorem is often applied. Therefore, let x again be a normed space and the first thing I can tell you is that we find for all points in x a special functional. The only point I want to exclude is the zero vector. Now the continuous linear functional x prime should have norm 1 and should also send the point x itself to the norm of x. This now already tells us that if we have a lot of points x in x, then we find a lot of continuous linear functionals. So let's write down a proof where we apply the Hahn-Banach theorem from above. First of all, we have to define our u prime and then the correct question would be, what is our capital U? In this case, this shouldn't be a problem because we only have one vector x as our information input. In other words, if this is the vector space x and here we have the vector x, then the only meaningful choice for u would be the one dimensional subspace that is spanned by x. In other words, we can just scale the vector x with all numbers from f. Hence, an arbitrary element always looks like lambda times x and we send this to lambda times the norm of x. So this is a well-defined number in f and it also fits in with our second condition here. However, of course, the important fact is this is indeed a continuous linear functional. Hence, we can apply our theorem from above and get a new functional x prime. It's defined on the whole space x, so it's an element in x prime. Now if we put in the point x in the functional, it's the same as putting it into u prime because x lies in u. Now looking back to the definition of u prime, we see what should come out is just the norm of x. In addition, the second property is that the norm of x prime is the same as the norm of u prime. However, this is easy to check, it's just one. And with this, our proof is finished. Now using A, we can immediately show the next important fact. It tells us that the dual space x prime separates the points of x. This simply means that for two different points x1, x2, we always find a functional x prime with different values for x1 and x2. So x prime of x1 is not equal to x prime of x2. Since this holds no matter which points you choose, the dual space x prime still holds the whole information what are the different points in x. In order to prove this, I already told you, we can just use a. 
This works by defining x as the difference of x2 with x1. Because now we can use a and know that there exists an x prime with the property that x prime of x is exactly the norm of x. And the norm of x is not zero because x is not a zero vector. However, we also know that x prime is linear, so we can rewrite this as x prime of x2 minus x prime of x1. Bringing this on the other side, you see, we immediately have what we want. Okay, by knowing this result, you see why the dual space is so interesting. Also, the next result goes into this direction because it tells you that you can calculate the norm of a vector x with the help of the linear functionals in x prime. More concretely, the norm of x is given by the supremum where we put in all possible functionals x prime, where we can restrict ourselves to the ones that have norm 1. And then we just put in the vector x and look at the absolute value. Of course, this should remind you of the definition of the operator norm, but here it goes the other way around. Nevertheless, we can use the operator norm to prove the whole thing. Namely, the norm of x prime is given by a supremum, so it's greater or equal when we ignore the supremum. You see what I did here? I ignored the case that x is the zero vector, because then the whole equation is obviously correct. And now on both sides, I want to apply this supremum here. I shorten that and just write the norm of x prime is equal to 1 underneath. And then you see, on the left hand side, we just have the value 1. Now you see the only thing we have to do is bringing this norm of x to the other side and then we have one of the two inequalities we need to show. Okay, let's write this down and then we go to the other inequality. Of course, for the next step we can use a again because it tells you that there exists a linear functional such that this number is exactly the norm of x. Or in other words, the norm of x is less or equal when we have the supremum on the right hand side. Please note, by a we also know that this supremum is indeed a maximum. Okay, the last fact for today is often used and therefore very important when constructing a certain linear functional. So let u be, as in the hahn banach theorem, a subspace in x. However, now it has to be a closed one. Also we fix a point x which does not lie in u. So the visualization should be you have your subspace u and a vector x that goes outside of u. In particular, it's not the zero vector. Then the claim is there exists a linear functional x prime with the property that it is the zero functional when you restrict it to the subspace u. So for each point in u, you get out zero when you put it into the functional x prime. However, when you put in the vector x, you don't get out zero. In other words, it's a non-trivial functional. And that's the important fact. For closed subspaces, we find such non-trivial functionals. Okay, let's end the video by proving this. What we need here is the quotient space x by u, which is just the vector space given by all equivalence classes for vectors x. And the equivalence class of x is just a set of all vectors where the difference with the vector x is just a vector in u. Or writing it in this way, you just add all possible vectors u to the vector x. So this is a common construction in linear algebra. If you haven't seen this yet, it's not so complicated. Essentially, we just want to ignore all possible movements we have in the subspace u. In conclusion, if you put in a point u into the equivalence class, we get out the zero vector in this vector space. Since we have a norm in x, there is a canonical choice of a norm in x by u. It's simply given by putting all possible vectors you have in the equivalence class, meaning x plus u, and taking the infimum. I don't fill in the details, but what you get out is a normed space. Now, since we got rid of the possibly large subspace u by using this construction, we simply can use the statement a again. This means that there is a linear functional in the dual space of x by u and let's call it y prime. And the only thing we need here is if you put in the equivalence class of x, you don't get out zero.
So here we use that x is not a new, so the equivalence class is not the zero vector. Now we can simply define x prime in the dual space of x by setting x prime of any vector, let's call it z, as y prime of the equivalence class of this vector z. This defines a linear functional because the mapping z to the equivalence class of z is also linear. This is not hard to show, you just need the definition of the equivalence class here and maybe I also substitute the x here with z. Of course, this should be just any vector in the vector space x. There shouldn't be any confusion with the fixed x we have in the claim here. Okay, then let's check that this x prime satisfies all the claims we want here. First, we already discussed it, it's a bounded linear functional on x. The second property tells us if we put in any vector of u, we get out 0. This is fulfilled because the equivalence class of any vector u is always the 0 vector. Now what happens if we put in the special vector x? Then we have here y prime of the equivalence class of x, which is non-zero. Well, so everything is satisfied and we have proven the claim. Now from this time on, every time you need such a functional when solving a problem, you can always say it exists by the Hahn-Banach theorem. Okay, maybe in a later video we will discuss the proof and other versions of the Hahn-Banach theorem. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.